Hello everyone, welcome back to Cloudiate YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to use Kubernetes on AWS. We will start with some basics of Kubernetes and move to Elastic Kubernetes Service or also known as Amazon EKS. Then we will deploy our application in Amazon EKS. Hi, I'm Robin Gotham an AWS Certified Cloud and DevOps Engineer, and I'll be your presenter today. So let me start by giving you an overview of what Kubernetes is. Kubernetes is a container orchestration service which provides high availability, scalability, and disaster recovery. It can run on local, virtual, or cloud environments. People are really excited about Kubernetes because it is one of the popular open source software and one of the most loved platform by developers. Kubernetes open source community is very large and the community actively contributes to the source code. So Kubernetes is always improving. Kubernetes has lots of interesting concepts, some of which we will talk about later in this series. It uses YAML to define the infrastructure as a code. As you see, because of all of these, Kubernetes is very popular and widely used at the moment. Kubernetes offers a portable and extensible platform for managing containerized workloads. Furthermore, Kubernetes is secure as it supports TLS for all API traffic validates the request and is capable of API authorization and authentication. Kubernetes comprises of master and worker nodes. Worker node is the one that does all the heavy lifting for us, which consists of container runtime, kubelet, and kube proxy. So container runtime includes the runtime environment for running containers, example Docker or container D. Kubelet. Kubelet is the process of Kubernetes that interacts with both container and the node itself. It starts the pod inside of which we have the container. Kube proxy is another node processes that performs the intelligent way of forwarding the request between the pods. Master node components basically does the management task, also known as control plane. API server acts as a front end for a Kubernetes cluster. It acts as a gatekeeper and is an entry point to the Kubernetes cluster. Every request is initially handled and validated by API server in Kubernetes. Scheduler. Kubernetes scheduler sees how much resources does the application needs, such as CPU or RAM. Controller manager helps to detect the cluster state changes, example crashing of the pods. HCD, also known as cluster brain, stores the cluster changes and are stored in key value store. It is a distributed storage system based on raft algorithm. It holds the current status of any Kubernetes components. In this video, we'll discussing about the most known elements of Kubernetes to get it started. Ports. The pod is the smallest unit of Kubernetes that runs inside a worker node. It is abstraction over container and is usually meant to run one application container inside it. You can run multiple containers inside the pod, but is only recommended in case you need a helper container that has to run inside of that pod. Each pod contains its own unique internal IP addresses. Pods are ephemeral. In case the pod ran out of resources and gets terminated, the new pod gets spun up, but the data doesn't persist. So Kubernetes volumes sustain data of container restart 
but in order to sustain data from the ports restart we need to have persistent volume persistent volume claims and storage class in place also when a container restarts it will get new ip address service helps in attaching permanent ip address to each ports Deployments is a blueprint for application ports, so we will most often not work with the pod, but work with deployments where we can specify number of replicas for the ports. So if we have two replicas for same application running in different ports, and one port gets crashed, our service will still send requests to another pod. Service Service helps our application accessible through the browser using the external service. The service lifecycle is not dependent on deployments or ports. We can deploy deployments and service separately and have them interconnected. EKS is the managed service for Kubernetes in AWS where we don't have to worry about management of EKS master nodes and its communication with worker nodes. In managed Kubernetes, you don't have additional overhead of provisioning Kubernetes cluster. Traditionally, we had to deploy all parts of Kubernetes ourselves, like deploy master nodes, etcd, set of certificates for TLS encryption, set of self-healing, monitoring security for authentication and also set up the worker nodes and after all those we still have to maintain it further and this traditional setup process would get more difficult in case we have different environments like dev uat and prod this is where eks comes in place to solve all those problems EKS takes care of master node in high availability. It has highly available HCD. Also things like API server, kube DNS, scheduler, controller manager, and cloud controller are done by EKS and configured properly. With EKS, we just need to deploy our worker nodes and our applications and authentications are handled using AWS IAM. On top of all those benefits, EKS gives you deep integration with AWS. So things like container image in ECR, elastic load balancers, Amazon EFS, Amazon EBS, also authentication using IAM, auditing of API calls in CloudTrail, it has integration with AWS CLI as well as EKS CDL CLI, which we will discuss further in this series. And we can customize AMI to our nodes as well. So talking about what workloads can we deploy in EKS. We can deploy microservices, web-based applications, and even machine learning training clusters as it supports GPU-based instances. So with these concepts, we are ready to get it started. So first of all, let's go to our repository and I'll be linking this repository link in the description below. So we have some prerequisites for following the lab for this series. So we need to have AWS CLI installed we need to have EKS CDL as well as Cube CDL installed in our local machine. You can use these links to install those components on your local. And moving down over here, I have also presented the steps that we need to follow for this series. So we need to have AWS CLI because it's a dependency for EKS CDL. So what is EKS CDL? So the cool thing that I like about EKS CDL utility is it uses CloudFormation to create our resources. So moving forward to kubectl, it is the command line tool which helps to trigger some APIs for Kubernetes cluster. 
So things like deploying applications, seeing the logs of the applications, getting inside the pod, all can be done programmatically using kubectl utility. So once you have ekscdl and kubectl, we can get it started on our hands-on lab. So let's move on to our EKS documentation.emd file. So inside of here, you can see we can use ekscdl create cluster help command to see the what options are possible for ekscdl. So let's try that on our terminal. You can see it listed out the bunch of options that are possible using ekscdl utility. So let's create our Amazon EKS cluster using EKS CDL utility. I'll be using US is two reason for this series. So you can see I have provided arguments with Destas version 1.18. I have provided the name for our EKS cluster and I have specified the managed nodes. Here I am going to provision two nodes for this lab. And I have provided ALB ingress access and for the reason as i mentioned we'll be using us2 and we are using on-demand instances we are providing the rs clean group uh, asc access so here we have that's that's the sss access argument which provides you sss access from local to the kubernetes nodes so by default this will be done through your public RSA key. If you have your RSA key on your local, it seeks for idrsa.pop file. So if you want to use the custom key, then we can also additionally specify dash dash SSS public key option. And on the node type here, I have specified t2.micro. Note that if we don't specify this flag over here, it will by default create in m5.lars and with tags i have specified the project with cloud yet eks so let me verify my config is set up to us2 so i can see my config reason is set up to us2 so after that let me use this command to provision our EKS cluster in US is two reason. So it might take about 15 to 20 minutes to provision our cluster. Meanwhile, if you go to CloudFormation, you can see our resources will be created using the CloudFormation stack. So if I go to CloudFormation, you can see we have EKSCDL cluster creation in progress. And similarly, if you want to check what resources are being created, you can always view on resources. So finally, our cluster creation is complete. And if you notice over here, you can see using SSS public key from .sss idrs.pub. If you don't have your keys in, make sure to generate one with ssh dash keys in space minus t space rsa command. So coming back to this repository, let's click on cloud EKS series. And let's move on to step to take .emd file. So you can see here we just provisioned our cluster and it has created CloudFormation stack for us. So if we navigate to CloudFormation console, you can see our application stack is just complete. So when we navigate to EKS management console, we can see our cluster over there.
So you can see we have our cluster with the name of EKS cluster over here. And if we click on this, we can go to the configuration and see what else compute and networking informations are there within our cluster.